Hi guys, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're going to talk about the differences between primary data and secondary data in marketing research, and then some of the techniques you can go about doing it. Now, what you need to know is if you're looking at primary data versus secondary data, primary data is when you go out and do the marketing research on your own. You find out what's right, what's wrong, what people think. I mean, you're the one doing the experiments and designing the experiments. You're doing the questionnaires and the surveys. All these things are about you doing it for your specific need. And that's one of the great things about primary research is that, hey, it's specific to your data issues, your topic, the problem that you need to solve, okay? That's why you do primary data, or primary, you use primary data because you have, you know what's going on, you know what you need to learn, okay? Also, when you do primary data, you get more insights than secondary data because if you get data that's given to you from something else, you don't know what did they do, did they, how did they do the research, who did they ask. I mean, when they're trying other genes, they say, oh yeah, these are comfortable, or do they go, yeah, they're comfortable. You know, there's other, you can really see the behavior of people in these kind of things, and that can give you even more information for your market research. So those are two big benefits of primary research. Now the thing is, or the primary data from, re, from marketing research, now, there are some drawbacks. One thing, guys, it can be very expensive, okay? Primary data, you've got to send people out to go ask the questions, have those focus groups, do those experiments and all these kind of things. You have to go out there and do that, and that takes time, and time is money in business, okay? Another thing is, well, these kind of tie together. It's expensive, and it takes time because you can't, you know, you have to, you have to go out and do these things. And you won't find out overnight. Now you can search for a, a study in Google, and it gives you information right there. But if you do primary data, you have to design your questionnaire, figure out what you want to ask, you know, uh, go out and ask people, then analyze the data. So it's going to take you more time. Secondary, which I talk about later, it's already ready for you. Okay, so but primary, it's going to take you time to do that. And also, if you're doing primary data, you need to have people that are trained in actually deciphering and analyzing the data. Okay, so that can be a little more complicated, so you got to get the right people for it. Now, what about secondary data? So, if we look at secondary data, basically this is data that you've already collected. I mean, when you go searching online in Google to try to find out what's going on in your market, or you look at old marketing data that you have from two or three years ago, you know, this is secondary data. Things have already been collected. Now, what's great about these things is, well, one, hey, you're saving a lot of time because it's already been done. I can use a previous research to learn from that, which is great because it can give you some insights. Another thing it does is it saves you money because it's already been done. I don't have to spend the millions of dollars or thousands of dollars or the man hours to get the research done in a primary setting. Like we talked about before, this way, hey, it's already there. We're saving the time. We're saving the money. It's, it's fantastic. But there are some issues with secondary data because it's not all perfect. I mean, think about it. When you go to Wikipedia, how's Wikipedia? Is it right all the time? I don't know. You can't take a chance with that. You don't want to take a chance with your company. All right. So if you look at some of the negatives of using secondary data for your marketing and research, one thing is it may not be relevant. Okay, you may be looking at it and say, wait, this is actually, it's, it's not tailored to my exact problem. Because remember, with marketing research, you have to have that big problem, that, that objective you want to achieve. Okay, it might not be relevant towards that. You know, if I'm looking at, okay, I want to know how sales in Thailand are going, you know, and I look at, well, there's sales in Vietnam and Cambodia numbers. Well, yes, that's similar, but how similar is it? it might, they might be completely different markets, so that's irrelevant to what I'm trying to get done. Another thing that might not be helpful is it, may, it might not be timely enough. It could be, you know, if I'm looking at selling houses and I look at housing prices in 2006 at the very top of the housing bubble, well, they're going to say a house is worth half a million dollars. But in today's market, in 2012, 2013, 14, these things, the housing market is at, what, 30% down, 50% down from 2006. So that's not really, again, look at the, the relevancy because the timing factor might come into that. Okay, and another thing you might look at as a downside of secondary data is, is more like you need to see who did the research. Okay, because it could be biased. It could be a, a, they're trying to say something, or or maybe there's research bias in terms of the questions they ask. I mean, think about it. If I put out on Twitter, hey, how many of you have Twitter? Well, obviously everyone does. So my numbers would say, oh well, 100% of the people responding had Twitter. That's why you have to be very careful with secondary data. See what their limitations were, that margin error of those kind of things.
So we've decided if we're going to use primary or secondary, well most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to do a combination of both, because do that secondary to get some background information, because maybe you can already find some answers already there, so you don't have to ask those same questions in your primary data surveys or experiments and these kind of things, which will save you time and money. Okay. Now if you're doing your research, there's a couple techniques you can do, different kind of research techniques. There's two main ones I want to talk about. One is called exploratory research, where you're going out and trying to figure out what the, the phenomenon that's going on, what is the real problem, what are the real issues. That's why you see, you know, like focus groups for elections. They want to find out, so what does this group really want? I mean, what do you, what do you desire? I need to find these things out. And that's what Exploratory does. It gives you the kind of gives you the reasoning why. Why are the what are why are some of these issues around or what are some of the issues, okay? So in-depth interviews will help you with that. Focus groups will help you with that. Just just observing people, watching people, that can give you some ideas, okay? Now the other side of research, I mean technique, is what's called conclusive research. This one is like, we need to know if people like it, yes or no. Now with these, that's why you have, you know, you might have surveys, whether it's your customer, you know, your customer card at, at McDonald's, or if you're a student and you have your, your, your surveys for your professors, that is inclusive one. On a scale of one to five, hey, how much do you like this class? One being not at all, five being it's the greatest class ever. These things come in, that, that, I mean, that's a survey you do, and it's conclusive. Ah, the numbers tell me yes or no. Okay, and so it's much more you want to kind of confirm what your final beliefs are, or if you want to confirm what our action plan should be. So, you might do an experiment on pricing. You maybe use scanner data to see hey, if we put pricing at one place and pricing at one store and one another, what happens to our sales? Does it change? You experiment with these things, and that gives you a, a hard, solid number. It's not hey, what, what happened? We're at, it would say, look, here's what it is. We changed it, we did the experiment. Did it hurt our sales? Yes or no? It gives you these things, and that's what conclusive does. Okay, so exploratory, trying to figure out what the main issues are and the why are we doing these things, why are there issues, and conclusive is like, hey, I want to conclude this, I want to know yes or no, uh, what what we should be doing. Okay, so I hope that helps you out to understand a little bit more about primary and secondary data and marketing research and exploratory versus conclusive research. Okay, now these are very basic. I mean, this is a very basic video of the things, but if you're trying to figure out what the what main overall idea is, I hope this helped. If you want to learn more about marketing or business or things like that, please check us out on our website at www.waltersworld.com. We're also on Facebook and we're on Twitter at Walters World with an O. So we hope to see you there. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Bye.